Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I want to talk about something that you could do with auto in Lightroom. Personally, I don't use auto at all. I prefer to just go through the sliders one by one and adjust my image that way. But I do know that there are a lot of photographers that use auto as a starting point. What I mean by that is they'll have Lightroom open with an unprocessed image in it. And the first thing they do is they go to the basic tab and they click the auto button that gives them their starting point, And then they adjust the image from this point forward. Let's take a closer look at what auto actually does. When you do press auto on an image, it will adjust eight different sliders. It will adjust all six sliders in the tone section and it will adjust vibrance and saturation and that's it. It doesn't touch texture clarity, dehaze, white balance, profile, none of that. It just does those eight sliders. Now I want to take a screenshot of my basic tab. I hit auto, right? So these are my auto adjustments. I want to take a screenshot of that so we could remember that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the image. So we're right back where we started and everything's all zeroed out. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrunch Lightroom over and I'm going to open up that screenshot so that we could see what I did, right? So these, see here, oops, didn't want to do that. Let's get that over there. Okay. Now, this over here on the right is the screenshot I did. And you could see that it adjusted exposure, contrast, highlight shadows, whites, blacks, vibrant saturation. And you could see the numbers of the adjustments. What if you just want to get an auto adjustment of, say, exposure? Well, you could do that. Hold in the shift key and double click on the word exposure. And you can see I got plus 88. That's the exact same adjustment I got when I clicked the auto button. But you notice the other adjustments or the other sliders aren't adjusted at all. What about an auto adjustment for contrast? Again, hold in that shift key and you can double click on contrast or you actually you could double click right on the slider and you'll get the same thing. There we have plus four. Let's do highlights and shadows. Hold in the shift key for highlights. I'll just double click on the word highlights. You can see minus 88 or I'm sorry minus 86 and shadows. I'll just double click on the slider itself, holding the shift key. And you could see plus 68, exactly the same amount of adjustment we got when I hit that auto button. I'm going to jump down to vibrance and saturation. I'm going to hold the shift key and just click on the names. You can see there's plus seven, same as we did before and click on double click on saturation while holding the shift key. There's minus two. Now you can see we got the exact same adjustments as though I went over and I just clicked on that auto button. Whites and blacks though are a little different. It won't give you the exact adjustment that you would have got had you pressed the auto button. I'm not sure why, but it just doesn't do it. So I'm going to hold in the shift key. I'm going to double click on the word whites. And before we got plus 50, this time we got plus 62. Uh, hold in the shift key, double click on blacks. And I got minus four. There are times when I will actually do this because I think that white and black adjustment is better than it was if I clicked auto. Let me show you. This is this adjustment that I got by holding in the shift key and double clicking on the six sliders in the tone section and double clicking on vibrance and saturation. So this is the adjustment I got. Now watch, I'm going to click auto. Do you see how now it gave me this, uh, the same exact numbers over here? I got the whites is plus 50 and the blacks is minus 34. See that adjustment? I'm going to undo it by hitting Command Z on my Mac. It's Control Z on a PC. That's the adjustment I got otherwise. So I actually think this is a better auto adjustment. That's just my opinion. Of course, this is subjective. But the whole point of this video is not actually to show you this like idea I have that this is a better auto adjustment. It's just that sometimes you may wonder, well, is my exposure right? Well, you could let me reset this. You could just get an auto exposure adjustment, not auto ex auto adjust anything else by holding in that shift key, double clicking on the word exposure. There's your auto exposure adjustment. Then you could adjust off this and just manually adjust if you want. You know, the way you would normally adjust things. Like I like to hold in the alt option key when I adjust my whites and blacks to get a white and black point. Right, like that. I come and do this. Of course, we didn't do those with auto adjustments. But 
See, that's the way I would do it. Um, I would hold in that shift key just to see my exposure, if I had exposure right. Sometimes I find it difficult with some images to get a good highlights and shadows adjustment. In those, with those types of images, I'll hold in the shift key and double click on either highlights or shadows to get that auto adjustment to see what that looks like and then adjust off that. So hopefully this helps you uh, better process an image in general. And on the other hand, maybe you have an image that's just difficult to process and you'll be able to get a better starting point by holding in that shift key and clicking on the name of the slider that you think is giving you the grief. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.